Hey there, this is Liam with Wedding Photo and Video by Liam. And today's blog is about just how long do you really need your photographer or videographer to stay at your wedding. After pricing or how much packages cost, this is probably the number two or second most popular question that we are asked. I'm asked this virtually every single day uh, here in the office, Monday through Friday. And I help a lot of clients um, plan their timing, how much coverage they really need. And it's, it's all over the board. I mean, we do weddings anywhere from two hours up to 12 hours. Uh, it, and every client is a little different. Um, one the thing that I recommend is this question is either answered by us or you can talk to your catering manager a wedding planner if you have one etc you want to get everybody involved with your timing so they come to us their clients come to us asking us about um, the number of hours of coverage because they want the best lighting possible for their photos and video and so this is how I, I start the conversation with everyone I'm like all right let's start with your ceremony start time because that's usually fixed in stone and then from there, I can walk you through uh, how to plan your timeline for the day. So let's use a fictitious example. Let's say your you know, uh, ceremony's at five o'clock. We then ask them, okay, let's look up on that date what time um, sunset is. We use the website timeanddate.com. There are other websites, but I have found this website quite accurate. Um, you type in your date and your location, and then you look at the, the time and date, um, the sunset on that day. Normally, we would back it out from there. So let's say sunset is at 6.30 that day. If you uh, did a 5 o'clock ceremony, you're probably in really good shape. So let's say ceremonies are 20 minutes, 30 minutes, etc., and then you want about an hour after the ceremony for the, um, it, we refer to it in the industry as the formals, the formal photos, the bridal portraits, etc. That's also the same time as cocktail hour. So once you have the ceremony time, let's say five o'clock, and sunset is 5.30, you know you've got an hour and a half to work in there. We tell all our clients, we highly recommend, if you're shooting outside, so you have your ceremony and all of your uh, formal photos completed by sunset. Yes, you usually get a little bit of time right after sunset where there is some light, but not much. Count on 10 minutes, maybe I would not count on much more than that. Again, of course, it depends where you are. If you have tall buildings um, or trees or forests blocking the sun so that sunset could even be earlier. So keep that in as, as uh, an idea. So now you know, ceremony, an hour for the formal photos, and also that's also cocktail hour. Um, and then from there, we go backwards. And what I mean by that is, we then ask the client, do you want any of the getting ready covered? Not everybody does. I'd say about four out of five of our clients want some of the getting ready. At the moment, right now, the average is about two hours before ceremony start time is what most of our clients ask us to show up. So if you had a ceremony start time of 5 p.m., on average, clients are asking us to show up at 3 p.m. Of course, that really depends on where you're getting ready. If you're doing the getting ready at the same location as the ceremony, well, that saves a lot of time. But if you're doing the getting ready at a different location, a hotel, your house, an Airbnb, etc., you've got to factor in a little travel time for that. And then if there are two of you getting ready at the same location, okay, that same time, sometimes they're at different locations. So you just want to keep that in, in mind. But on average, it's two hours before. Um, we can go to about an hour before, and I know it sounds like, oh, an hour of getting ready is plenty, but it's, you really won't get a full hour because what happens is we have to, um, once we're done with the getting ready with you, we have to break down our equipment, 
and then run over to the ceremony area and get into place prior to you arriving or the groom walking down the aisle or the officiant walking down the aisle. We want to get all of that, the processionals. So to do that and to get into place, we got to leave 20 minutes before um, you walk down the aisle, 20 minutes before the processional. Video usually has to leave even a little earlier. The video will leave from the getting ready area to go to the ceremony. At the ceremony, we will mic the officiant and or the groom, plug into an amp system if they have it, do an audio check, etc. We've got to get all that ready. So we have to leave the getting ready 30 minutes before for video, 20 minutes for photo to get into place. So the getting ready on average is two hours before. Some will go to three hours, but very rarely will anyone ask for more than three hours of the getting ready. Very rarely. We're doing about 100 weddings a year right now. We probably only do you know, three or four or five a year that want the three hours. Two hours is the norm. Now, we've got the ceremony time. We've got the sunset time. We've got the getting ready time. Now we're going to jump forward to the reception. Receptions, oftentimes it's like a four-hour contract, five-hour contract, something like that. We then ask the client, what time does your party end? Let's say they uh, end at 11 o'clock. So five o'clock ceremony, 6.30 uh, sunset, you're done with your ceremony, you're done with your formals by 6.30. Uh, cocktail hour is just ending. So 6.30, you're probably doing your entrance now where you're going into the reception and everybody's cheering. Hey. Then we ask the client, is there anything that's going on at the reception that you really want to make sure that is covered? One area where clients can save a lot of money is not keeping your photo and video team to the very end of the night. Most don't. So of course I you know, could try to sell you and say, oh yeah, you wanna keep photo and video to the end of the night. I, I, don't, I don't agree with it. Um, I can't tell you how many times we've been at a wedding and the last 45 minutes or so, it's 20 people standing around a bar and the team there. And it's just, it's a waste. You don't really need to capture that. The only time clients keep us to the very end of the night is if we are, um, if there's something scheduled at the end of the night that you really want to capture. With uh, Latin weddings, they do a Laura Loca, the crazy hour. Sometimes that's at the very end of the night. Or if you're doing a send-off, for example, a sparkler send-off, and you want that near the end of the night, that would be the only reason to keep your photo and video team to the very end of the night. Otherwise, most have us leave about an hour early before the end of the night. Now, if that is the case, you just want to make sure that you front load any of those events or things that are happening during the reception that are important that you want covered. So your entrance, if you're doing a first dance, I call them parent dances or special dances. Um, you want those at the beginning. If you're doing any toasts or speeches, get those done at the beginning. If you're cutting the cake, throwing the bouquet, do that at the beginning. Try to get all that done so that it is covered by photo and video and we're not missing anything and that last hour or so is just extra dancing if you will so if you have an 11 o'clock end time you might have uh, your photo and video team there until 10. so now we're going to recap the whole thing five o'clock ceremony i recommend putting 4 30 on your invitation that's what most clients will do if there's a 30 minute uh, lag time in between what the invitation says and when you actually will walk down the aisle, the processional. 4.30 on your invite, 5 o'clock on your ceremony, 6.30 sunset, go backwards. We're going to arrive at 3 o'clock, so you've got about two hours before ceremony start time for the getting ready. Fast forward, 6.30 is when you do your entrance. Party ends at 11, the reception ends at 11 have your photo and video team leave at 10. So now you're looking at a 3 p.m. start time to a 10 p.m. end time. That's a seven hour contract. That's a very common contract that we, uh, that we get, that we do. That would be good coverage. It's covering pretty much everything from the day. Um, we can do a six hour, we can do less. Um, but now you just start cutting into the getting ready time and the reception time. I have found that the hardest 
most difficult number of hours is when a client wants five hours. When they want five, they're trying to squeeze in some of the getting ready and some of the reception, and, and you're just not gonna get it. It's really tight. When you go to six, you have a little more breathing room. The clients that want four or fewer hours, they understand, they, they get it. They're like, hey, I'm, I'm not going to get um, any of the getting ready, and I'm okay with that. And so they can do a four hour contract or even a three hour contract. But five hours is really one of the more tricky contracts. Um, finally, one of the questions that comes up, occasionally we will have a client say, hey, I want all day coverage. And let me explain what all day coverage is. All day coverage is started by amateur photographers. They were trying to get into the market. They had to um, position themselves uh, against more experienced photo studios. And so what could they offer? They, they couldn't offer their reputation or experience or years or whatever. They could offer all day coverage. So all day coverage means they'll show up as early as you want and leave when you want. And I don't recommend it. Um, first of all, if you're gonna have somebody work 14 hours that day, you're not gonna get quality work at the end of the day, trust me. People are tired after being on their feet running around for 14 hours. Uh, it's just not good quality. And I have found that when, when a client is comparing like our quotes versus somebody else's and they mention all day coverage, I always ask, just you know, check out the, the background of that photographer, how long have they been in business, check their reviews, et cetera. Every single time, it's a new amateur, newbie photographer. And if you're okay with that, go for it. But um, we don't offer all day coverage. I do have a professional team uh, that I employ. I have to pay them hourly. I can't just say, hey, here's your, your day rate for the day rate. It's not fair to the team. And uh, we pride ourselves on having a great team and we think we pay very well also. So that's the concept of all day coverage for photography or videography. Um, but again, to recap, the number of hours, how long do you really need your photographer or videographer there? It, it depends on the variables that I talked about. Start with the ceremony time, factor in the sunset, go backwards, couple hours for the getting ready, go forwards to the reception, find out what time the party ends, and then cut your team loose maybe an hour uh, early from that. I hope that helps. I help clients all week with these schedules, so don't hesitate to contact me. I'm happy to walk you through um, if you need a more customized uh, coverage timing, etc. And thank you very much. Wedding Photo and Video by Liam.